All right, Ebushan, for today is yet another beautiful day the Lord has given unto you and I. And if you find so, and any day they can we need extra channel is with YouTube and start at and say me best or better break. No, I share videos, no, I'm an aquarium, or share no, I like to comment to subscribe. We are no, I share content, no, and that's why I recommend the channel. No, I'm only a mission. Your videos will be a Ebushan for me. No, I see your audio back will be a drop on start at and say me best. I say what I didn't need to know. And if you find so, you boom, and then put you in some audio. We are not in a yard, so you don't comment. It was on TV3 News earlier today. Uh, we have been trying to verify. It, it looks like there's, there's no real verification for it. We understand that the OSP has spoken to people. That is not true. It is here. More cash found in Cecilia Dapas' residence by the Office of the Special Prosecutor. The officials used five hours to count the cash. We understand that this is untrue. I don't know. I mean, she's been granted bail. The source is TV3 Midday News. It's un it, we, we understand that it's untrue. And that the OSP must come out and, and sort of clarify this one. Because it's been going on for a while. And we do not know the source of TV3's information. But when we try to search this uh, over the last two hours, every signal we are getting, that is not true. So we don't know. We don't know. But we are getting signals that this is grossly inadequate. So really, I don't know why TV3 since midday have been carrying out this information without quoting anybody. They are not quoting the special prosecutor. They are not quoting uh, the special prosecutor's deputy. They are really not quoting, but they are saying this. We checked with sources from the house. They said it's not true. They were, nobody was here for five hours. So, I mean, I don't know. This, so this is not forming part of our editorial presentation tonight because when we found it, somebody, one of our team found it and, and sent it to us and said that, what about this? And said so we decided to look at it. So, yeah, that is the, the photograph you're seeing of, of the so-called search in Cecilia Dapa's house. And this is the outcome of it, published on a very serious network, TV3. We take them very seriously. So we're concerned about fitting this into our conversation, but we are not finding it. So if TV3 have better and further particulars of this matter, they should publish it tomorrow or else, if it's not too late tonight. They should publish it so we can see it because this story is being debunked from all the sources that we are checking. And we have been told that a special prosecutor himself has spoken to people and he's told them that this is untrue. So I don't know where this is coming from. Uh, if, if people who are listening know TV3 or TV, hey, maybe Captain Smart is what, what Captain Smart, how are you? Are you watching? Please, this is your story. Where is it coming from? Uh, please call Captain Smart. You know, he wears dark spectacles in the morning, but that doesn't matter. He's a nice guy. So, but this, please, Captain Smart and his people, verify the story for us so that we can factor it in and then we can all deal with it, isn't it? It's nation building we are all doing, so it doesn't matter whether it's your story. We'll use it and we'll give you the attribution. But for now, we are unable to verify this and, and therefore we cannot deal with it. Okay, great. All right, so now with that gone away, we are now ready to start the story that you have been waiting for. Great. So this is uh, Cecilia Dapa's husband. He's over 80 years old. This is Cecilia Dapa. She's nearly 70 years old. This is Cecilia Dapa's husband at work as an architect. All right, let's start with the police statement. Uh, and then we'll build it uh, from there. Now that we know the, uh, is, it, is it next? Okay, they'll get the police statement for me. Uh, yes, so here is the police statement. So earlier today, after all the drama of the OSP, now we have a second story about the OSP and his activities. And, and, and don't, don't take it personal. OSP is my, is my friend. I'm older than him, but I call him senior. Not too long ago, I was in a long conversation with him. So I know him. He's a good guy. He said that he's a good guy. What I'm going to talk about has nothing to do with him personally. It has to do with the way the OSP's office operates, and I'll deal with that coming soon. Uh, now, very, very soon. But now let's start with the Cecilia Dapa story itself. So this is a press release that is signed by Grace Ansa Akrofi, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Director, Public Relations. And it's as follows. Police submit case docket uh, on investigations into a case of stealing reported by Mr. Daniel Oseiko for and Honorable Cecilia uh, Dapa to the Office of the Attorney General. So the police have submitted a docket. It says, one, following a case of stealing reported to the police by Mr. Daniel Oseiko for and Honorable Cecilia Dapa, former Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, the police initiated investigations into the case arrested some suspects, recovered some of the stolen items, and arraigned the suspects before court. Okay. Police have since forwarded the docket to the Office of the Attorney General and Minister for Justice for review and advice. 
Grace Ansa Akrofi, Assistant Commissioner of Police. She signed it. Okay, so there are, there's, there are a lot of questions that we'll try and answer tonight. Now, what we are going to do tonight is not against anybody, and it's not in defense of anybody. It's to share with you the facts as has come to us. We will put a connotation on the facts as we, we are wont to do all the time, and then you can interpret that connotation the way you want. But everything that we're going to tell you here is true. Nothing untrue, okay? All right, as we have been, as we have seen, because we have seen the charge sheets on the police. People are asking questions, something like this, why do you report to the police, da, da, da. People are even criticizing the president for the kind of statements he released, that it's prejudicial and da, 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 da. Okay, so let's get to the story. So this is, a, this is the man. Now, the, the, let's get to the stolen money or the, the missing money or whatever it is. Okay, so no, we will start with 800, please. Let's start with the lower one. Please, 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 please. Yes. Okay, so this is the first amount of money missing. 200,000 United States dollars. It was in a bag, according to the report that was made to the police. And the report that was made to the police is months old. The amendment to the charge sheet occurred on the 20th of July. The story broke in Ghanaian Chronicle on the 21st of July. So if people are concerned about the amendment of the charge sheet, it was done at the time the story hadn't broke. Since the story broke, Cecilia Dapa and the complainants have not changed any part of the story. And that's very important for us to establish because we asked them that this charge sheet you are giving to us, which has been amended a few times, has it been amended since the story broke? And they said no. The last amendment occurred on the 21st, 20th of July, whereas the story broke on the 20, 21st of July. So since the 21st of July, which is last Friday, no changes have been made onto the charge sheet. And we, we, we needed to satisfy ourselves with that, okay, before we get into the story. So we were told that, okay, $200,000 in a bag belonging to Cecilia Dapa, $200,000 in a bag belonging to Cecilia Dapa was tempered with. Let's move on. 300,000 euros in a bag belonging to Mr. Osaikofo, Cecilia Dapa's husband and her business was also in a bag inside the room. Okay. Jewelry in a container was also in the room and it was also tempered with. Some of it stolen, some of it brought back and they don't know, the police don't know how long the stealing took. But it wasn't a one-off Stealing. I don't know how you call it, conversion for lawyers or whatever. It wasn't one of stealing. It was pilfering, stealing small, small. Mabana comes, take 10,000, gives it. So I come, take 10,000. So I come. And it was, somebody was caught red handed. That's the story. I mean, that's one people know already. It's in the chat sheet that came out. Some, some, the guy was caught red handed. He said, Oh, me, dear, I just took this one. But yesterday, Mabna took this. He bought a house in the man here. Uh, the Mabna says, Dauda took this and he's going. Dauda says that this one took this. So that's the way the thing happened. As we say it in Pigeon Mania, like that. So this is also a box, jewelry. So we've accounted for 300,000 euro belonging to Cecilia Dapa's husband, 200,000 euro belonging to Cecilia Dapa herself. And the big one, um, yes, no, 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 the big one, this one, $800,000 in a wooden box with a padlock in front of it, $800,000 in a wooden box with a padlock in front of it. Now, the alarm came when the padlock was seen to have been broken. It's not in the safe, it's in the, all of this was in her house, $800,000 with the padlock in it, okay. Now let's go and account for the funds one by one according to what is on the charge sheet as she reported to the police. Okay, let's start. Let's go back. Oh, let's, let's go back and start. Okay, so $200,000 belongs to her. That's what she wrote. It's for me, Cecilia Dapa, $200,000. Okay, 300,000 euros. It is for my husband. He wrote here, I said, it is for me. It's for my work. Okay. And then um, 800,000. The jewelry is for Cecilia Dapa as well. 800,000 is for... A man. Okay. That's the controversial matter. Now, the 800,000 was reported to the police and described to belong to Cecilia Dapa's brother. We'll, we'll get you the details of who the brother is, what he does, where did he gets 800,000 from. We'll get you the details of who the husband is, what he does, where did he get 300,000 from, as it's on the charge sheet. And then Cecilia Dapa, we all know, we all know what he does. We can raise the question. And this is it. Where did you get your $200,000 from? We can raise that question. We will raise that question tonight. But here, 
This $800,000 is controversial. Why? Because it doesn't belong to Cecilia Dapa and her husband. It doesn't belong to them. The $800,000, according to the what Cecilia Dapa wrote to the police, which is in the charge sheet right now as I speak to you, if you get the charge sheet, it is there. And it was written months ago. It is for her brother, who died, unfortunately, at age 60. Before the brother died, she had given this amount of money to their mother. That their mother should keep the money because he was going to use it for an enterprise. I'll show you the brother's profile and you know what he, you will see what he does, and then you can understand and you can make your own decision whether he could have eight hundred thousand dollars or not. People in Kumasi know him very, very well. Okay. So that money was given to Cecilia Dapa's mother before the man died. When the man died, Cecilia Dapa's mother called her and said, Your brother's money, the one he gave me for the purpose of, I'll show you the purpose as I talk the story. For the purpose of X, Y, Z, it's still with me. I think I should hand it over to you for safekeeping. So Cecilia took the money with the consent of the other siblings, the consent and concurrence, if you like. With the consent and concurrence of the other siblings, she took the money. Okay. So now the money is with her. Then her mother, who gave her the money, also unfortunately passes. And those who know Cecilia Dapa know that she had two funerals almost close to each other, her brother and her mother. Everybody went to Kumasi for a president was there. Everybody was there. Okay, so when her mother died, this was still with her. And it was given to her with the consent and concurrence of her brothers. So once this was tempered with, how was she going to inform the other brothers that our brother's money that was given to me has been stolen? She was going to suffer a family integrity crisis. Hence, the report to the police. That's why she reported to the police. Because this money is not for her. And the family people know that it is with her. So the other brothers also wrote a statement in the charge sheet. They wrote a statement. The other brothers wrote and said, yes, we are aware that this box was given to Cecilia. And we are aware of the contents. Because if she didn't do that, how is she going to tell the people that the, the money that was given to me, my brother's money, is, is, is missing? How is she going to, who's going to, I mean, how is she going to deal with that? It's a family integrity issue. Because you live with your husband, your brothers don't live there. And then you come and tell us that $800,000 is, is, is what? Who stole? My brother stole $800,000. Nobody's going to believe it. So it's, it's not all the eight hundred that was stolen. It's not all that was stolen. But it was broken into by the breaking of the padlock. The seal was broken. So everybody knew that somebody has tempered with this. Now, that's why the report was made to the police, so that there will be a public issue. Okay. With that said, let's get to the background of, uh, of the people. So $200,000 for Cecilia Dapa, €300,000 for her husband, $800,000 for the money that her brother gave to the mother. The mother died and handed it over to her. All right. Let's get to the details. Let's start with her husband's company, uh, Mr. Ben Osekufo. What are we doing? We are trying to get on an investigation to determine whether the source of funds is plausible whether it is potentially corrupt funds, whether it is potentially stolen money from politics, or whatever it is. Okay, so we are now accounting for 300,000 euro of Cecilia Dapa's husband, who says the 300,000 euro is for me. He claims it in the charge sheet, in the statement to the police. He claims it, he said it's for me. Okay, how does a man like that come by 300,000 euro? It's not simple to have 300,000 euro. Many of us watching don't have 300,000 euro. If I had 300,000 euro, I will say hallelujah and I'm praying for it, but it will be in the bank. But everybody is different. We now know that it's not an offense. There's some of the old school people, like the 80 year old people, they've gone through several epochs in Ghana here, as we say in Pigeon, in Ghana here, where laws have been passed and people have lost their money in the bank. Those of us who are young may not understand, but there was a time when some 50 CD notes issued during the Rollins era and you lost your money. So a lot of the old people, they are not accustomed to those of us who are doing internet banking and phone banking and mobile money banking. And they don't know those things. They keep their money under their bed because they don't know tomorrow. A lot of the people who are beyond 70 and all of that, they do a lot of cash transactions. They keep the cash with them. They don't put it in any bank, you know, because of the, of the history they have suffered from the Nkrumah era to the, uh, uh, the Buzia, Buzia. So there was Nkrumah era where people were afraid to have money in the bank because you'll be called. And then the Buzia era, they did the, the depreciation of the currency and people's money was lost. 
In the Rawlings era, there was seizure of people's money in the bank just to clean up and deal with inflation. So they've seen all of these things. Therefore, if you talk to them, you will not understand why, but they don't put, take their money to the bank. We do. We are internet banking and all that. The generation behind us, they are internet banking. We are Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. Yeah, we understand those things. Later tonight.